Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Writer's Block. And more specifically, within the Writer's Block is the sub-series of me complaining about stuff, which I get my topics from this book, The Stuff I Hate Journal. So, we've already done two episodes of this. In the first episode, which you can find both these episodes on the channel, if you just take a look under the playlist, The Writer's Block, or under the sub-playlist of Complaining, which is just those videos. I've already complained about happy couples. <laughs> And um, it's the little things I hate, which is about, if you can read in there, condiments. Not condoms. Hate those too. But <laughs> um, So this third one, I haven't read it yet. I'm just opening it now. It says, my body is a trash dump. It says, they say your body is a temple. But sometimes, okay, maybe a lot of the time, that couldn't feel further from the truth. Use a noun to describe your body in the following situations. When someone is walking slowly in front of me, my body is a temple of rage. It is still a temple. But I start building up like I'm fucking Chernobyl, man. Like, when, especially, I guess it matters the situation. If I'm, like, just hanging out with some friends... And just chilling. Somebody's walking slowly in front of me. It doesn't bother me too much. Because I'm not really in a hurry. But if I got places to go. People to see. Things to do. And you're walking slowly in front of me. I might explode. I'm like Chernobyl. I'm like Three Mile Island. I'm like. I, what are other things that exploded? Uh, most SpaceX rockets. Uh, Teslas. Uh, you know. Just combust. It's one. Bam. I mean, it makes it the worst, and what's even worse than somebody walking slowly in front of me, is somebody driving slowly in front of me. Um, I can't even, I can barely function as a human. I feel the anger coursing through my body as I talk about it. Because the idea of driving slowly in front of me makes me that mad. I'm like, I'm shaking right now. I'm shaking. I drive a lot for my job. So I'm on the road a lot, unfortunately, which means I deal with this constantly. And it, whew, after a night of saying I'd go easy, but partied hard instead, my body is a corpse. I get hit with the worst hangovers. Sometimes I literally will only have a few drinks, and I wake up the next day feeling like complete garbage. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to do anything. I just want to combust in my bed. Just lay there forever and just hope that eventually the pain goes away. If I do need to do stuff or I want to feel, you know, I don't want to waste an entire day, my kind of hangover cure is coffee, bread products, or something to like a starch, you know, potatoes, bread, something like that, soak up the alcohol, and water, and electrolytes. I try to get some liquid IV, I try to get some Gatorade Zero, I try to get something like that to rehydrate my body. Because really that's the problem when you drink. The hangover is really a... It's really a symptom of your dehydration because alcohol very, very heavily dehydrates you. And usually when you're out drinking and partying, you're not drinking enough water, period. Even without, you know, the extra water you need to offset the alcohol. So you wake up incredibly dehydrated. So water and electrolytes, very important. Get some food in you, feel better, and some coffee to give you a little bit of energy. It's the best you can do. But I do feel like I'm dying actively. After a Zoom call when my colleagues want to make small talk, my body is a fidgeting nightmare. I hate Zoom calls. I hate them. They always last way too long. I always get bored. And I'm just sitting there. And the worst is when you're in like a work Zoom call and the boss is like, does anybody have any questions? And you're like, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go play. And somebody's like, well, yes, actually. And I'm like, God, fuck it. Damn it, man. And 99.9999999% of the time is a question that I know the answer to or I don't need to know the answer to. So why didn't you just ask this in your private time? I got places to go, people to see, things to do. And even if I don't, I'd rather be doing most other things in the world other than sitting through more minutes of this Zoom call. So the fact that you're asking this is is unacceptable in my opinion unacceptable and i can't stop moving i'm just a fidget nightmare when it comes to zoom calls honestly i gotta start 
getting I gotta get like another monitor at my job or something and just be playing like Pokemon Showdown or Pokemon Rogue or something in the background during these Zoom calls so I can actually sit and be present without like every couple minutes I'll like like 10 15 or whatever I'll like pick up my work phone here it's right here I'll pick up my work phone um and like tap on a bit and go like this and turn off my camera so that my people think that I'm taking an important phone call and really I just do a lap just do it just walk around a bit just so I can get out of it and step and move and get the blood flowing when I'm scrolling through my ex my ex's current significant other's Instagram and accidentally like a photo my body is a nothing this has never happened to me ever um, when I break up with somebody I unfollow them on everything so I can't see their social media feed. So I'm not going to know who their ex is. And if I find out or who their, you know, I'm not going to know who my ex is dating or not dating. And if I do find out because somebody tells me, I don't give a shit. I don't care at all. We are exes for a reason. That is somebody that used to be a part of my life. And now they're not. So why would I care what they do now? Because they're not a part of my life. They're not somebody that matters to me anymore. So this doesn't happen to me. If it did happen to me, I wouldn't really care. Whatever. What? this? The guy's going to be like, oh, you, your ex-boyfriend liked my photo on Instagram. He was stalking me. Sure. Yeah, I was. Yep. And if he messaged me about it, like, why are you stalking me? I'd be like, just wanted to see who's, you know, who my ex-girlfriend downgraded to. That's what you say, right? Because anybody that's not me is a downgrade. I'm just kidding. Probably not. Um, you know, if she started dating like, I don't know, like Timothy Chalamet or something. I can't really say that. But what does Timmy have that I don't? Money, fame. Uh, uh, he's an actor. Uh, he's prettier than me. He's. But you know what? I'd be a better actor in Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> When I meant to show, wait, when I meant to get a subtle glow at the beach but fell asleep on my chair, my body is a Mr. Krabs replica. I, I mean, if you can't tell, I'm very, very white. So I burn pretty easily. So if I fall asleep on a chair at the beach, I'm cooking, bro. They're so, I'm getting sauteed out on the beach in that chair. It would be a nightmare. I wouldn't be able to sleep. I need aloe. I'd have to basically to go to sleep. I'd have to submerge myself in an oil drum full of aloe. Now, honestly, that wouldn't be a bad idea if you have that type of money and capabilities. For if you have a really bad sunburn, just to sit in an oil drum of aloe and let it absorb, and you can actually like not be in pain for a little bit. But yeah, I burn really, really easily, so that would be a really bad time. When an older relative makes a passive-aggressive comment about my life, my body is a non-fuck-giving machine. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about what an older relative thinks that I should do because I think I know what I should do. I have a plan laid forward. I'm following out that path. I'm following out that plan. And realistically, there's not much that they can say. Because even if they maybe have like, oh, you could be doing this better, you could be doing this instead, you could be doing this instead. I have a job. I have a full-time job that, you know, I'm slated for promotion soon. I It contributes to my 401k, pays me well enough. There's room for growth at that job. And I like it. Like, what else? Well, you know, what, I, what else could I really want? What else could I really need? Um, sure. Is there jobs out there that pay more? Absolutely. But in this market, am I going to go quit my job to go and try my hand at another job? No. It's so hard to find jobs right now. The fact that I have one and have one that I actually enjoy. No, man. I'm not looking to gift horse in a mouth, man. I'm going to appreciate I'm gonna appreciate what I have. And so those old relatives, you know. It's also like, do you even know what you're talking about? Like for old, especially older relatives, like... The world's not the same when you were a kid. You can't go buy a house for 10k and it's now worth 300k. That's not how, you know what I'm saying? That's not how this works. Things are different nowadays and you don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. Of course, you know, older relatives have a lot of wisdom. 
and stuff like that. You know, age and experience do bring wisdom. But at the same time, their word is not a law. You can go your own path. You can do your own thing. What they say doesn't really matter unless it matters to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain people in my family um, where their opinion and stuff like that does matter to me. I value their opinion. I want it. Um, so if they say a comment, I would probably care about it. And, you know, if it's if I deemed it passive or aggressive, we'd probably have a conversation about that because I'm not going to get disrespected like that. And, you know, in the sense that, like, I'm not going to get disrespected to have people talk passive aggressively to me. That's not how this works. You know, you treat me with respect or else I'm not going to treat you with respect if you don't treat me with respect. But that is the end of this episode of the writer's block. I need a fucking haircut, dude. I got to get I got to get that figured out. I got that figured out. My hair is a mess. But, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to see more. There's a couple, two more complaining episodes on the channel. And the Writer's Block's also a series where a lot of different commentary topics. So you can go check those out. As well as other videos on the channel from both myself, James, or the two of us combined. Thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. Hopefully the next time you guys see me on camera, I have a haircut. But don't count on it.